I watch the Freak Nick Doc with 100 people. Y'all can do like some free lives in the Discord. All right, the first time we see Tariq and Braden, they on campus. Tariq got them Dior's on. Now, you know Tariq is spending a pretty penny. For them to not have any money, he's stepping on business. Now, when they show up to campus, everyone's calling Tariq a hero. And the reason they're calling Tariq a hero is, well, you know, he unalived somebody that unalived Special Agent Young. Now, from my perspective, I don't know who took out who. I just know when I woke up, there was a body there, and Tariq was in front of the police. That's all I know. And I can't confirm or deny who did what. But there was, a, it looked like a, an assailant in all black. Now, I don't know who it was, but someone was on a FaceTime call with a woman by the name of Noma. And we know it was Tariq, but we don't know if Tariq pulled the trigger. But we know Tariq pulled the trigger because Braden was like, hey, man, what are you doing? And now, when they get back on campus, everyone's like, Tariq, you're a hero. And there's some white guy talking about, hey, man, why don't you come on my podcast? If you innocent, come on my podcast. Now, Braden is talking about, nah, man, you a conspiracy theorist. And everybody like, hey, Braden, ain't you suspended? Because remember, Braden ain't supposed to be on campus. Braden ain't even suspended. I think he was exiled. You know, you sometimes you get suspended. You know what I'm saying? Expelled. No, they exiled him. Basically saying he can't be here. He can't be in New York. But Braden, he's dealing with it. And as he walks off, there's some other members of this school, the Weston Holden Library. Well, Weston Library is being torn down. All accreditation and, and you know, saying acknowledgement of the Westons on campus is being removed. Now, some people are saying, hey, Braden. Yeah, you, Braden. Hey, fuck you, man. Your parents and Weston Holdens, they just lost all my mom's pension. Now, everyone invested their money in there. Now, if it's too good to be true, if you hear people talking about 25% returns, Anything over like anything over probably like a six percent annual, you might be able to pull off like an eight, maybe, maybe eight percent, but that's gonna be like that's fucking high yield. Now you have to have at least like a hundred bands in there to pull off some shit like that. But you hear anything like that, we guarantee you 25% back. I mean a 25% interest. We we guarantee no 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 that right there is a scam. But Weston Holdings was a scam from the get-go. So they like, hey, fuck you, Brayden. You done made our parents lose all the money, man. We poor now. We looking like that nigga Mo. And Brayden's like, hey, man, I'm 20 years old. I ain't got nothing to do with that. And I don't even go to school here. Now, I played the audio earlier where we heard Tariq and Brayden talking about not having any plugs, any connects. And Brayden mentions to Tariq, we can't even move any work because we know Noma will put two bullets in the back of our noggins if we tried that. So he's like, yeah, man, we got to get back in the game some way, somehow. And as they walking off, you're just looking at them like, man, you already know they about to be in some nonsense. Tariq St. Patrick, you're up next. Tariq goes in here and he's trying to get a job. Now, it sounds like his school and everything ain't paid for anymore. And I'm wondering why. Like, didn't, didn't James pay for school all the way up until the end? Where's the com does anyone know where this confusion came from? Talking about like, um, hey, you gotta work because uh your tuition and like all this extra shit. Like, I thought ghost paid for four years worth of school. Unless James set it up to hey, your fourth year, you're gonna have to work to learn some responsibility because he knows what Tariq is gonna do. Bullshit. That's all I was trying to figure out is where's the disconnect. Hmm. His trust is in West and Holdings, but hold on, let me think. Give me a second. Let me think back real quick. Just let me think. Back. 
if it's a trust though You can't pull from the trust because I know the the club was over in RSJ's name. They moved that over, but if it's hmm. I'm gonna do some research, but all right, let's just go with it. Got lost in the damn trust. I mean, the the trust got lost. With Western Holdings, but if it's a trust fund, you can't, no one can pull from that though. So that money would always be there. Interesting. Nah, because remember, James had it set up where nothing could come out of the trust until he graduated. So if he moved it over, the trust would still be secure. Now, well, the SEC. So when we say he lost it, the SEC may have just confiscated everything and they may be holding on to that shit. Until they can sort it out. Hmm. Cause I, I was for sure that, cause remember, RSJ got Club Truth because Tariq could move all of his assets around. He just couldn't access them, so he gave it to RSJ. RSJ was holding his shit, so Western Holdings didn't have it. Because remember, RSJ said the only way I'm gonna put my money into Western Holdings is if Tariq will give me his shit as collateral. All right, we got let me let me write that down. You know, hey, IRS agent Moses will be back on the scene. Give me a hey, let me get like a couple of days on this one. I'm a, now that's something I want to find out. How like how and where is the trust at? Trust fund. No, 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 no. Remember, RSJ took all of Tariq shit in order to invest into um uh, into Western Holdings. But when the, the thing went down, remember RSJ, he met up with Lucas and said, Hey, you can do whatever you gotta do. Give me my shit back. Remember, before Lucas was uh jumped off the building, RSJ went in there and he sat down with Tariq. And that's when we found out that. Tariq was all right with the club because it was up under RSJ. And RSJ told Lucas, hey, whatever you got going on, you got to get me my shit back. You remember? They sat down and they had that meeting. And RSJ was like, hey, I don't care that this is a... Because that's when I said RSJ is dirty because he went along with the Ponzi scheme as long as he got his money back. So Lucas was paying him the money back to get RSJ shit up out of there while everyone else was losing money. Damn, this is wild. Hey, I, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I wrote it down. I'm going to go look in. I'm going to go back and listen to all of that shit. We got to find out where this trust is at and how Tariq is delinquent on these payments. RSJ, do I have a picture of RSJ? RSJ is the black guy. He kind of looks like the dude from Save the Last Dance. You know, the black guy that was dancing, but an older version, but it ain't him. Uh, let me see. RSJ. Ron Samuel Jenkins. A trust fund, a trust fund board. All right, uh, I gotta order another board, and then I, I can do a trust fund. But yeah, this is RSJ.
All right. So Tariq got to get a job, three jobs, and he has to wear the uniform. From there, uh, we got Tariq in the classroom. Now, we spoke about this a little bit, and then me and Brillo went over it. So that'll be in the uh, the Monet video. Well, the, the Brillo, it'll be a video uploaded to Brillo where we're talking about the classroom. We're going to try to work on something each week if they have the classrooms again and go over the, like the details and how it links to the different characters. But basically, Tariq is saying that being a leader comes from being defeated. You don't want to be defeated. And when you are defeated, you kind of like. Yeah. It's like you, you, you're defeated, but you, you want to bounce back. But at the same time is. You, you, you're looking at the situation. And it is kind of making you stronger. Right? You know what I'm saying? Well, don't kill me, make me stronger. You know what I mean? Something along that nature. Or for all of the older people, you know what I'm saying? If you know this song, go ahead and sing along with your boy. They told him, don't you come around here. Don't want to see your face. You better disappear. This fire's in their eyes and their words are really clear. So beat it. Just beat it. Ooh. You better run, you better do it, you can Don't want to see no blood, don't be no macho man. You want to be tough, better do what you can. So beat it, just beat it. <laughs> beat it, beat it. No one wants to be the king. So a power funky, strong is your fight. It doesn't matter who's wrong or right. Just beat it, beat it, beat it. Beat it, beat it. Beat it, beat it. Yeah, what y'all know about that? What y'all know about that? <clears throat> They're out to get you better do what you can. <laughs> Better leave while you can. Don't want to be a boy. You want to be a man. You want to stay alive. Better do what you can. So beat it. Just beat it. You have to show them that you're really not scared. You're playing with your life. This ain't no truth to them. They'll kick you. Then they'll beat you. Then they'll tell you it's fair. So beat it. But you want to be better. So beat it, beat it. No one wants to be defeated. No, show them how funky strong is your fight. It doesn't matter who's wrong or who's right. <laughs> hey, that nigga Michael Jackson. Hey, that nigga was out there fighting them niggas. He didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be a macho man, but he had to be there, man. But I'm saying all that to say that Tariq is saying sometimes when you're defeated, it makes you a better leader. Because if you don't know how to lose, then you don't know how to win. And in life, it's like that sometimes. You got to take losses in order to get the wins. Because if you start off winning, when you take a loss, it's going to really humble you. And it ain't going to be the same as if you lose before you win. You just got to do what you got to do. You just got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? I like Michael Jackson. I like Prince. You know, I, like, I like all the music. But Beat It was one of my favorite songs, man. Because he was talking that real shit, man. You want to join a gang? They'll kick you. Then they'll beat you. Then they'll tell you that's fair. Joe B. Like, it ain't fair, man. It ain't. Now we're jumping around because we did we seen the clip and we all know the clip to uh Tariq and uh, Effie are talking to each other and he ain't got nothing to do with her. But he's at work and Braden shows up and we get introduced to L. Now L is a part of the group with Brasandria and there's a another gentleman that's played by uh Blue Vandross or I think that's the dude name. No, no, I don't listen to that dude shit. But Tariq and Braden. They're trying to get back in the game. So L tells them she knows who Braden Weston is because she goes to school here also. And she knows that he used to slaying dope. 
So she's like, man, I need me a new connect. Wink, wink. Keep that in the back of our mind because when they get in the game, she might be someone that they need to mess around with. They're doing the mess around? Now, I don't know all the words to that song, but yeah. They need to mess around with her because she needs a new connect, a new supplier. So if Tariq and Braden are moving on a smaller level, we need to go ahead and put that down. Tariq. No, Braden. Connects with L. Moves new product. There we go. And then Tariq runs into Don Carter. Now, Don Carter takes him out in the hall, and this is an old school talking to. And he's basically telling him, I know who you are, and I'm not falling for your shenanigans. Tariq is talking with that, that innocent voice. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. That's what happened. They got to shooting. I seen a body. I reacted. I got to shooting. That was it. He said, <laughs> yeah, you smell like your daddy, bitch ass nigga. I'm bringing y'all down. Yeah, I could smell the stench on you now. No loyalty, no trust, nothing. No pride, no morals. I believe that you had something to do with Special Agent Young's on a lobby. Tariq's like, nah, I ain't got I ain't got nothing to do with that, sir. Well, what does he do? He pulls that ace of spade out of his back pocket. Oh, yeah, Tariq. <laughs> Real quick. Your mammy, Tasha St. Patrick. Yeah, you know, the one that worked up at uh, Quick Depot, whatever the bullshit is. Yeah, your mama. Well, they about to throw her ass out of Wick Sack. Yeah, 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 I know a lot. I'm on a special task force. I got jurisdiction across all five boroughs. That means all of New York is mine. If your ass is in Uptown, I'm on your ass. You in Midtown, I'm on your ass. Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten, all of that shit, I'm on your ass. I know about your daddy. Piece of shit scum. I know about him. I know about his affair with uh, Angela Valdez. I know about him. I know about him and some white guy named Tommy Egan that you call Unc. I know about him. I even know about your daddy telling on a man by the name of Kanan Stark and getting him locked up. I know about it. I know about the shooting in your apartment at your house, the killing, the unaliving of a lawyer by the name of Proctor. I know about it. I know about a Terry Silver stuffed in the back of a damn trunk like a piece of luggage in the back of a Cadillac in the garage. Stanking. Yeah, I know about it. I know about your mama showing that monkey toward a driver in the backseat of the Escalade. I know about it. I know about everything. And it's going to be fun bringing you down. If I don't do anything, I'm a ball. Counting all day like the clock on the wall. Tariq, you're going to jail. I don't know when. I don't know how. You're going to jail. So Tariq is like, oh, shit. This nigga know about my mama on WITSEC. Everything else he he, heard, he he forgot all about it. He said, wait, you know about my mama? What you know about my mama? Yeah, I know. With sack, two unalive marshals. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I heard about it. I just told you I know everything, Tariq. So Tariq is out here like, oh shit. And your mama, when she get out of Wixack, everybody in New York City is gonna be gunning for her. 
the number three snitch of all time, Tasha, a.k.a. Vanessa slash Rachel slash two-time chicken head, biggest dope dealer this side, the Mississippi St. Patrick, a.k.a. Green. Tariq's like, oh, shit, man. Damn. Fucking my mom is doing some bullshit again. Hey, thank you, Derry B, for that $4.99. Go and get your duffel bag, boy. Exactly. Clowning all day like a clock on the wall. I forgot he even said that. I'd be so far gone sometimes. But Tariq ends up calling Davis, and we know he's on the phone, and Davis basically clar clarifies, hey, this dude is the real deal. This dude ain't playing around. He ain't like nothing you've seen in the last three seasons and the first six seasons of the OG power. This nigga is legit, and he is crossing his T's and dotting his I's and putting his lines on his capital Q's. This man is the real deal. Yeah, she showed that monkey in there. Yeah, yeah. I watched the director's cut. I don't watch the one on TV. I watch the director's cut. She had that thing. I was like, ooh, Tasha. Tasha, what you doing, girl? Well, Tariq goes up to Shop Depot to holler at his mom. Hey, mom, what's happening? And she's up here. Tariq, what are you doing? You need to stay out the game. You need to leave all this alone, Tariq. You need to get right, because if not, we ain't going to be around too much longer. He's like, well, what about Wick Sex? She's like, yeah, it's true. I'm going to be up out of here. And out of nowhere, the manager comes up, put his like hands on Tasha. I'm like, hey, Tasha, what are you doing? We don't bring our personal life here. <laughs> we don't bring our personal life here. She's like, oh, no, I'm telling them where the DVDs are. He's yeah, like, well. Uh, Rachel, uh, Rachel Thompson, uh, get your ass back to work and uh, quit talking to that young Negro. Uh, sir, if you're not going to buy anything, we're going to have to ask you to leave the store. If not, we will have security escort you, and uh, I'm not playing around. We got the police on speed now. Uh, Tasha, we're going to go ahead and deduct this from your pay. You can go ahead and kiss your lunch this week. Goodbye. Uh, over and out. So this guy acting weird, and Tariq like, hey, Ma, why are you letting these niggas talk to you like this? Do all this shit. So Tariq goes outside and whoops this nigga ass. But basically, he's trying to make sure his mama's straight. Like, what other, what else are you supposed to do as a young boy? What else are you supposed to do? You know what I mean? We know Tariq ends up getting his car back. He gets that back from our boy 2-Bit course we kind of talked about that i mean it wasn't really much Tariq had his spare key very easy to write we didn't have to overthink it spare key find the car get in there and dip out now of course we know that two bit has the main key and if he finds the car anywhere then he can do the same thing so they'll just go back and forth with it two bit is a vegan at the ball bap ball bap grill i think it is And he got the whip. And the last thing we see about Tariq, that's the thing. I, I think we're going to start, I think we're going to rearrange it. And we'll we'll probably start talking about Tariq so we can go more in depth. Because, I mean, we covered Tariq, every character that he talked to. We, you know, we kind of already covered that. So I'm probably going to start moving Tariq up to like the middle of the show so we can talk about Tariq a little longer and go more in depth. Because you, everything we talking about is like, all right, we didn't already went over the classroom scene. We explained that. We talked about him dealing with Effie. So we don't really get to talk about Tariq as much. Saving him for the end. Pause on that. That's crazy. But y'all know what I mean. But the last thing we see is Tariq talking to Monet. And he's like, hey, listen, I'm strapped up. You strapped up. Hey, it is what it is. If we get the bucket, we get the bucket. And anyway, sometimes you got to get the bucket. But they in the vehicle. And they're talking. She's like, listen, I don't know who I can trust. 
But I'm thinking I can believe what you're saying, Tariq. And they're saying you didn't have nothing to do with it. Tariq is saying, no, I didn't have anything to do with the shooting. And we know he didn't have anything to do with the shooting. Rachel had something to do with the shooting, allegedly. That's what they're saying. I don't know. I can't remember who it was. They were masked up, I think, allegedly. I don't know. Maybe it was Tasha or maybe it was Rachel or Vanessa. I'm not for sure. But we know that it happened and Monet recovered in two episodes. Now, Monet is like, all right, listen. Well, I need to find out whoever shot at me. Tariq knows that it was his mom. But at the same time, Monet believes and trusts that Tariq didn't do it. So he has that leverage of, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'll help you find who did it. And we're going to find out if the, you know what I'm saying, the non-dynamic duo, Diana and Drew, was well, really about to just be Drew because Diana pregnant. She don't need to be off in that battlefield. But, hey, it is what it is, man. There we go, man. There we go, man. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We got a damn. We got a four and a half hour live in. Not bad. Not bad. I fuck with it. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Join the Discord. It's pinned in the chat. Subscribe to the Mo. You know, we're gonna be over there. I'm gonna be doing more live streams. Uh, I got a couple of them that I do want to talk about. I'm gonna uh, bring up. Obviously, this week, not this weekend. Uh, I'm going to try to get to, like, daytime lives on the weekend, on Saturdays, if I'm not traveling. So we'll have, for sure, we got Monday mistakes. We got Thursday, are we ready? We got Friday on the clock. Those are guarantees. Tuesdays, I probably, I'm going to try to do 2B Tuesday, like, during the daytime. But that's not going to be set in stone. So I might have to do that in the evening and then do Wednesdays. We might have to do Wednesdays, House of the Dragon. I don't know. We'll figure it. We'll figure it out something. I'm a I'ma make something shake. But hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm a pin. Uh, okay, it's still being in there real quick. Let me see something. 